What's up, YouTube? This is True Raw for TV. And uh, it always gets me when I see a lot of these, you know, young snot-nosed kids say, you know, they look at a video footage of these guys playing back then and say, oh, man, these guys would be bums today and they wouldn't come off the bench in today's NBA. And it's funny because Team USA is getting their ass kicked by guys who literally are coming off the bench in today's NBA. So if you want to tell me that Evan Fournier is better than George Gervin, then I don't know what dreamland or dream world that you're stuck in, but whatever you're smoking, whatever you're smoking is some of the best shit ever produced. Now, in this video, I want to talk about Gus Williams, all right? Gus Williams is probably a top 10 all-time player in the Seattle Supersonic slash Oklahoma City Thunder franchise. They're both considered the same franchise um, until uh, the NBA decides to bring back the Sonics, and then uh, Sonics history will be attached to the new franchise. But... Freddie Brown was probably the most important piece of those Sonics championship teams in the late 1970s um, because he was unselfish and he played a role and he, and he changed his role in the team for the betterment of the team. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, he was drafted in 1971 out of the University of Iowa. His senior year in Iowa, he averaged 27.6 points per game and 4.6 rebounds per game while shooting with 50% from the floor. Now, initially, he didn't get a lot of playing time. All right? He was playing behind uh, veteran guards such as Lenny Wilkins. Um, over the next two years of his career, uh, Lenny Wilkins and other guards were drafted, excuse me, were traded. I think Lenny Wilkins went to the Cavaliers and some other players went uh, elsewhere. And then he got playing time. And then over the next several years, he averaged better than 20 points a game playing for the Seattle Sonics. I think it was in 1974 in a game against the Warriors where he lit up the Warriors for 58 points, including the game-winning shot. Um, that 58 points is still a franchise record that is shared with Russell Westbrook. Of course, when Westbrook did it, they were known as, and they became known as the Oklahoma City Thunder. But I want to put a caveat to that. Remember now, when Freddie Brown was playing, there was no three-point line. The shot that was the game winner for that game when uh, uh, Brown scored 58 points, it was in today's NBA, it'd be a three-pointer. So you have to imagine how many points some of these guys would have scored if they were playing today's NBA or if there was a three-point line back then. So over, over the next couple of years, he put up some all-star level numbers. But then the team got better. Lenny Wilkins came back as the head coach. He retired, became the head coach of the Sonics. Then they acquired some guys, acquired some talent. They got Gus Williams in. And, uh, uh, Jack Sigma and Dennis Johnson in his prime. Contrary to popular opinion, uh, Dennis Johnson that played with the Boston Celtics was not at his athletic prime anymore. He was a little bit heavier, um, didn't have quite the same lateral movement, the same lateral explosive. He didn't have quite the same lateral movement, not quite the same. Uh, he lost actually quite a bit of explosiveness. But he still was great and still was a top-notch A1 defender. He was just that much better when he played for the Sonics and Phoenix. Look at his highlights. Look at games with Dennis Johnson. Whenever you see a, a, a highlight of him or a game with him with the big-ass fro, not the little tapered shit that he had, you know, the little tapered down, little natural that he had with the Boston Southern to fit in with the conservatism of Boston shit. If you, 
you know, and also that shit was going out of style by 1983 to 4. But when you look at the big afro Dennis Johnson, that's him in his prime. But anyway, to fit in with this team, because now they had Dennis Johnson, now they had Gus Williams in the backcourt. Coach Wilkins put him in the back, uh, excuse me, had him come off the bench. Instant offense, same role that you have with a guy like Benny Johnson, the same role that Carmelo Anthony kind of was supposed to play with Portland, but we had uh, ball uh, fucking huggers or or, or or ball snatchers and and uh, I don't know if I'm using the right term. Is it ball stoppers? I guess ball stoppers with Leonard, Leonard and McCullough. But anyway, he played that role perfectly, and it led to two NBA final appearances and a championship in 1979 for the Sonics. To give you an idea about how good a shooter this guy was, the first year that the uh, NBA instituted three-point line, 1979-1980, downtown Freddie Brown led the NBA in percentage with 44%. Now, in the years that the three-point line was measured, uh, excuse me, was uh, available, and these stats were available, downtown Freddie Brown shot 37% from three. Now, that includes his decline period. Now, in today's NBA, the average for players is about 36.5%. So I want to, you got to kind of look at it like this. During the early 80s, Matter of fact, let me go back. It's hard to be precise when I'm saying these things. If you go back to when he retired, the league average, the three-point percentage, like right now it's 36.7%, which is the highest it's been since 2008-2009. And, and and tied for the highest ever. When Freddie Brown retired, it was at 23.8%. 23.8%. But he was shooting 37, 40, 44% from three. Which is basically what I'm trying to say this. He was so much better than league average. It'll be something like a guy, it would be akin to a guy shooting 50% or more from three today. I mean, that's how much better he was than the league average back then. So there's no doubt in my mind if you put downtown Freddie Brown in today's NBA, okay, with all of the advancements these guys have today, he would be a superstar. I I, I truly believe that. He would be a superstar level guy. He would, with his shooting ability, his scoring ability, and he wasn't just a guy that, he was the rare guy in that in that era that didn't just shoot. He could shoot well all over the court, but he also had phenomenal range that you didn't see back then. You know, people think that Steph Curry is the first guy to have range. That's not true. Now, the things that Curry do with the ball and shooting, we haven't seen that before. But just a guy that could pull up. No, we, we've had guys like they could do that. You know, Chuck Person's one of them. Dan Marley could do it. But before them, downtown Freddie Brown could do it. That's hence the nickname downtown. It was, I mean, this is an exaggeration, but some people say, man, he could probably make a shot from the locker room. Now, of course, that's an exaggeration, but this is a guy that could shoot from half court and make them back then. So I just want to give my flowers to this guy. When he retired, I believe he was the all-time leader in points for the franchise. Uh, that's not the case anymore. He's been surpassed by guys like uh, Russell Rushbrook and, and Gary Payton and Kevin Durant, but I think he's still top five in that category, top four, top five. Uh, when he retired, he was the all-time leader in steals for the franchise, so he could do, get it done on both sides of the court. And um, this was a guy that was very important, very popular. That's another thing I want to say. He was a very popular player for the Sonics franchise. And, um, you know, just wanted to give him his flowers. So, you know, much respect to downtown Freddie Brown. Tell me what you guys think.